If I can invite you to take a seat, please. We'll get going. Grab a coffee on your way. As folks are getting settled, I'll just make some uh, quick housekeeping notes. So, uh, as you might guess, there's no working washroom facilities in this building. So, if you do need to use the washroom, there's um, some outdoor facilities just out the front door there. Um, and just be mindful, this is an unfinished building, so if you could just stay within the sanctioned off areas, uh, we would appreciate it. So good morning. I'm very excited to be here today. I'm Laurel McCalla. I'm the Director of Development at Boyle Street Community Services. Um, and I want to thank you all and welcome you all for being here today, a part of this a very exciting announcement between Boyle Street Community Services and the Edmonton Oilers Community Foundation. So to start off our program today, we have a few different speakers and um, entertainment pieces. But I want to just begin today with the great pleasure of inviting uh, a knowledge, keep, knowledge keeper and elder Clifford Cardinal to the stage for our opening prayer. Grandmother, I want to give, give thanks to uh, Rose Wabaska. I also want to give thanks to one of our greatest uh, leaders and elder of the day, uh, Willie Littlechild, who, is, who has really uh, created an imprint for so many others that follow in that path of uh, trying to understand law. And uh, my our hearts go out to, to our elders that are here with us. And of course, it'd be amiss to not acknowledge our Grand Chief of the Treaty 6 Territory. I want to give acknowledgement to Mr. Greg Desjardins, who is the Chief of the Frog Lake First Nation, also the Grand Chief of our territory. When we give acknowledgement and, we, and when we give thanks, in our way of life, as we come into this building, what is this building? What is this place? What can we make it? How can we make it more, more understanding and more open to so many people who live in desperate times? I wanted to offer a prayer today in the language that was given to our people thousands of years ago. And I want to acknowledge Boyle Street Community Services for saving so many of our people. I want to give thanks to the Community Foundation of the Oilers for taking that risk in making a dream happen for so many vulnerable people in our nation, more importantly in, in the parameters of this city. So with that, uh, I don't mean any disrespect to anyone, but I would like to offer this prayer in the language that was taught to me by the old people. Ah, no, da. Ega ma maga gi ko ega wane ki ana no. Te ka pun to e ka tama nan ge. Pix ko un ka gi na ka tama ko ya ke mista me maga na. Ni ga na na skum no da. E ta usta mo at mo ya ka mo sa pa at mo gi si ka opisum a semi na pego. Amaga yok tamina ga kyo kotaga ne mosum nanak no kum nanak ne we ka mau ta pito ati kisto ga te bwata ga una amaga pe ga na hanan ge kseo ati zun wane ki anuta e ga ni ga wane ka kispen wane ge ane 
ko iskas ta mo eka. Nu ta o to esta mo ago au ge ka ke o no aku magana ki si ta mo ta mo. Chiga mani sta e mo a se to ta man han ge gi ko ya ka ge peske nu ta mo no ko. A ma ge o kon ge ka ge am ka o ne ka mo ta man han ge me che e ga nan to te ka wi che e o kon e ke ma am ta ne ma ge. E o kon gui chu ka mo. Me said, no, who magan? He won I could not talk gayway. I'm a go tow check up moot and gale cock gale. Giam cup and gee so so, me watch on my ego, cap and tahkayak. Elksis and Dr. Magis the moat the magian, mean Elksis and ask Kumuana notes. Hey, hey. Thank you so much, Clifford. I'll now invite Cookham Rose Wabaska for our land acknowledgement. Uspagan nega muinsku on sihkasun. Mina Rose Wabaska. This morning, I would like to say hello to all of all of you, my relatives. My name is Pipesong Woman, and the name on my driver's license is Rose Wabaska. Today I was offered tobacco to come and say a few words. I could never um, uh, follow Clifford's, Grandpa Clifford's uh, prayer, but I would like to say a little prayer as well. You know, we, we're all on, on the Treaty 6 land and we're very fortunate to be here. You know, there was a time in our life that we all lived in peace and harmony on Mother Earth, and we didn't have homelessness. And as times changed, and so did our living situations, I would like to acknowledge Boyle Street for all that they have done for our people. I'd like to acknowledge Elder Clifford Cardinal, Grand Chief Greg Desjardins, and Chief and Elder Willie Littlechild. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> you know, um, Treaty 6 is a very huge territory, and there are many, many people on this territory. I come, personally, I come from tr the Treaty 8 territory. I would like to acknowledge um, Boyle Street and thank them so much because just recently in the past few years I had a daughter that was living in the homeless situation. She was camping down at the river valley in the cold like this in the tents with no warmth and the bus that goes around checking on people found her in the river valley and brought her up housed her. Now she's got her own apartment. They ha Boyle Street was who helped her get back on her feet and I would like to thank Boyle Street with all my heart for helping my daughter because sometimes your own children don't listen to you. You can't help your own children and it, it's so hard for a mother to see and, and, and it's so heartbreaking to see your own child in a situation like that. I am so thankful that she's got a home. I went to visit her yesterday, and she's warm, she's clean, she's got warm water, and a bed to sleep on, and shelter. I'm very thankful. And with that, what I would like to do is say a prayer. Say a prayer of thanks. I will say a prayer of thanks in my language, which is Cree, and that's my first language, and then I'll say it, and I'll, I'll translate it to English. Hakama mau nuhtau ina, si manto, kia oge mau, kia kahkia koe ka te pihtigin. Ne musu mak nuhka mak kahkia on wako magana kahkia opsiskoa kagi naga taskiik. Ne gaui aski, ki se gau pisim, te pskau pisim. Kahkia oke na naskum tnawao, ina naskum o yaku mapmatsuun ka mii ahkuta ki se gau kapmuhtia. 
kapini so kamagi akuta o mahatos kiun kitu tamek ay sino kawi ni so kama kapun kaktemak seta takawatsta kanukti katita wakakakski takwatandi kihtam kawin pato hapwi kawi mit suta inanas kumoya kum kakia wuta ay sino kapi suata kapi mama wapia kwayas kakwisi chigiyak wakmino mamsi waska higan kawi hohti namek taniso kamagia kutaga kaisi no ka kaniso kamuaya kwa kamiyayata creator grandmothers and grandfathers mother earth father son and grandmother moon we give you thanks for another beautiful day of life bringing us here together so that we may be able to work at helping the less fortunate people that we may be able to help the people find a place to sleep, food to eat, and keep them warm. We give you thanks, Mother Earth, for all the medicines that you provide for us from your, from your body, for us to be able to ha have good food, clean water, and the medicines that we need. Father, Son, we give you thanks for allowing us to be relatives of everything that you touch, that we are related in every way that we can be, to all human beings of Mother Earth, to the trees, to the water, to the fire, to the plants, and all the animals that are on your body, we give you thanks. And Grandmother Moon, we give you thanks for keeping us safe at night and watching over us while we rest our eyes and our, on our tired bodies. We give, you th we give you thanks, all of you, for this second day of our life for us to wake up and have a good life and be able to help other people. Ay hi, all my relations. Hey. Thank you so much, Cook and Rose, for being here today and for always supporting our children and our families and our community members. So I'll now invite Carmen McNary, our circle keeper, to the stage for a Treaty 6 acknowledgement. Thank you, Laurel, and uh, thank you, Clifford, uh, for framing our gathering today for us in the context of the greater forces that are at work. And thank you, Kukum Rose, for your moving land acknowledgement and prayer. Uh, very much appreciated. It's my honor to serve as the uh, circle keeper, as Laurel said. Uh, and just before I move to the, to the treaty acknowledgement in the context of Kukum Rose's comments, I, I just wanted to explain how I came here. Um, Boyle Street has been part of our community for 50 years, but I was introduced to it more recently. Uh, Boyle Street became part of a healing journey for one of my sons who had spent some time on the streets, not here in Edmonton, uh, but in Toronto. And he returned to Edmonton uh, at a time when he was trying to find himself uh, and facing some, some mental health issues that, that are significant and, and profound. Uh, Boyle Street offered him an opportunity to serve uh, the community as a volunteer first and then as a staff member through uh, what Jordan had described to me at the end of it as being one of the most difficult winters Boyle Street had faced in the community. Um, and as difficult as that work was, it was very much uh, part of Brian's uh, recovery. And so I became personally connected to Boyle Street a number of years ago, and I've been honored to work with Jordan and the team, uh, and I think that's what's led to me being here today. It's my honor to acknowledge the very special re relationship that was documented in Treaty Number 6, and it is timely to do so, and I welcome the Grand Chief, uh, and thank you for, for attending, and Chief Littlechild, and uh, others. Um, our historical relationships, the, the historical relationships between the people who inhabited Turtle Island and what, what is now known as Canada and the people who were coming there are pretty well known. They're acknowledged at almost every event that we, have, that we open these days. Um, but they're not always understood. 
treaty number six, which was concluded at meetings between August 23rd and September 9th, 1876, was the treaty made and concluded between Her Majesty the Queen on the one hand and Plain and Woodland Cree and other tribes of Indians on the other, as described in the document. It followed meetings during which the commissioners on behalf of Her Majesty sought and received the consent of those people and to make a treaty with them so that there may be peace and goodwill between them and Her Majesty and that they may know and be assured of what allowance they are to count upon and receive. That was the fundamental creation of the legal relationship between the Crown on behalf of all Canadians and it is recognized and helped to define a relationship based on agreement, consent, and goodwill. As we all know, the starting principles have unfortunately been challenged throughout the almost 150 years that have passed through actions and inactions that have denied both opportunity to the people that we made promises to and the benefits that we actually agreed to. The current discussions about reconciliation are all about regaining that relationship and returning to what was promised and agreed to through the actions of the Queen and her government and chiefs and council. We are all parties to these agreements and reconciliation literally means the restoration of all those friendly relations. Namoyet is a word in Kakwala, the language of the Kwakwakwak peoples from northern Vancouver Island and adjacent islands and mainland BC. And it means we are all one. That word, Namoyet, has been adopted as the mission statement for Reconciliation Canada, a grassroots effort to acknowledge the past, assess the present, and prepare for future relationships between Indigenous peoples and all Canadians. We are all one people. And with that in mind, today we acknowledge the importance and the relevance of Treaty 6 and our ongoing relationships and the need for reconciliation to heal the present and prepare for a better future. The vision of Boyle Street Community Services in its 50th year is to see that all people grow healthier through involvement in strong, accepting and respectful communities. So we gather today here as a community with shared purpose to help ensure that Boyle Street is able to achieve that vision. This is entirely consistent with treaty and the fundamental recognition that we are all treaty people. Thank you all for attending. Thank you so much, Carmen. I'll now invite Devin Sapp for a drum and vocal performance to the stage.
Thank you so much, Devin. It's now my pleasure to invite my good friends and colleagues, uh, Jordan Reiniger, Executive Director at Boyle Street Community Services, and Krista Fitzgerald, Deputy Executive Director at Boyle Street Community Services, up to the podium. A little taller than Laurel, so I'll raise the mic. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, as I look around the room, it's a room full of friends and supporters. Uh, so we're, for, we're grateful and honored for you all to be here. Uh, in particular, Cliff Cardinal, uh, my, my friend and uh, uh, a good guide uh, to Boyle Street, who's been with us for a long time in our journey. And thank you, Clifford. Uh, and to Cook and Rose, for, for you being here, both of you, it's an honor. And for all that you've done for our organization and the people that we serve, we're grateful. Uh, and we're honored to have Greg Desjardins, Treaty 6 Grand Chief, and Chief Willie Littlechild. Thank you for being here. So on behalf of the team at Boyle Street Community Services, our board of directors, and most importantly, those we serve, we're excited to announce today that we have secured this new facility that will be the future home of Boyle Street Community Services. We've been searching for a solution for over six years. Our current building is not fit for purpose, and even with substantial upgrades, would, be, would not be a viable property for Boyle Street over the long term. This new site allows us to create a state-of-the-art facility that's purpose-built for the work that we want to do. And it's just two blocks away, allowing us to stay in our current community because that's what the people we serve asked us to do. This place will be transformed into a space that's beautiful, open, and natural, a place that shows those we have the honor of walking alongside that they matter, that they are as important to our community as those who can avail themselves of the many new downtown amenities. The total project cost will be 28.5 million, and we already have 15 million secured thanks to our partnership with the Edmonton Oilers Entertainment Group and the Edmonton Oilers Community Foundation. We'll be asking the community, including government, business, and individuals to support this project and help us raise the additional 13.5 million that we need. The Edmonton community has always stepped up when we needed them and we're incredibly confident in our ability to pull these final pieces together. We're so excited to announce today that this project is happening for Boyle Street Community Services, for the community, and most important, for the people that we serve. In many ways, the state of our current building and the promise of this new site are a metaphor for the situation that we find ourselves in today. The current situation that is being experienced on our streets is devastating. The number of people experiencing homelessness has more than doubled over the past year. This number is in the thousands, including youth, adults, seniors, and families. We are seeing a mental health crisis play out on our streets. We are witness to a drug poisoning epidemic ravaging our community an epidemic often unseen or forgotten amidst COVID-19. Each and every day, we see the physical ailments people endure due to exposure from the elements, frostbite so severe that it leads to infection and amputation. We also see the social isolation that results from our community members feeling perpetually like trespassers in their own city repeatedly being made to feel unwelcome, demeaned, and shamed. And for those we serve who are of Indigenous descent, the spiritual disconnection from having been forcibly removed from traditional culture due to atrocities such as the Indian residential school system, where so much was taken, including ways of healing, ways of life, traditional languages, roles, and ceremonies, many Edmontonians have not yet considered the impact of such loss. Those who experience homelessness are three to four times more likely to die than those in the general public. Just last month, we held a memorial fire ceremony for those of our beloved community members at Boyle Street who have passed away. There were 165 names. 165 people who laughed and loved, 165 people who were friends and parents 
and siblings and children. The status quo is not okay. We must do better. We must come together to do better for those in our community who are most at risk and often forgotten, those who are needlessly suffering. This new building project is part of doing significantly better for those that we serve. It creates a purpose-built space that allows us to change the way we deliver services in a way that better supports those we serve and is better for the community in which we are embedded. We acknowledge that we exist at our current site and with this new site just two blocks down the road within communities. We can only accomplish our mission of ending chronic homelessness when communities are thriving. We want and believe that this new site will enhance the community around us and are committed to a robust community engagement process where we can collaborate on how this building will look and interact with the surrounding community and how we can contribute to our neighbourhood in positive ways over the long term. This site will have outdoor space that's natural, beautiful and private rather than forcing people to sit on the sidewalk as is the case with our current facility will have private and dignified courtyard spaces that will free up the sidewalks for pedestrian traffic and give those we serve a park-like environment to be in. Inside the building, we'll be able to create multiple smaller spaces that foster interdisciplinary collaboration, relationship building, and community. When we ask those we serve what was most important, what the most important thing to them is in terms of moving forward with their life, it's often not housing or counseling or recovery supports. It's often that they feel lonely and that they don't belong. They want to be connected to community and to family. They want, like all of us, to feel like they are loved and that they belong. They also want the opportunity to give back and can contribute to the community in meaningful ways. The building will be designed to facilitate community and foster healing relationships. It will embed culture and ceremony in all of our spaces, including specifically designed cultural and ceremonial rooms and outdoor space. This will not only allow us to facilitate the healing journey in new and intentional ways, but it will also allow us to manage crowds in different ways. Rather than asking somebody to leave the entire building as we have to do now, we can have them try another space in the building leading to less people leaving our site agitated. The 38 unit apartment building just outside there uh, is already in operation and it allows us to incorporate housing on, on the site. We know this model works, as we used to support many people in McDonald Lofts prior to its closing. By incorporating the existing housing stock into our current service delivery model, we know we'll be able to support people differently and more sustainably. Most importantly, this building will be a, a place of beauty and respite for those we serve, a place that demonstrates to them that they matter that we as a community care enough to build a space like this for them. It will create more opportunities for people to exit homelessness, which makes for a better community for everyone. This new facility will also house our partners, like Bent Arrow Traditional Healing Society and Children's Services. Thank you to Cheryl Whiskey Jack of Bent Arrow for being here with us today. It will be home for the more than 40 programs and services that we currently offer to support those we serve with whatever they need. It will also be the home of our social enterprises, including our bank, Four Directions Financial, which is a branch of ATB. Thank you to Curtis Stange for being here to celebrate with us. And our business called Higher Good that currently employs more than 200 people with barriers to employment many of whom are experiencing homelessness. This new building will be the home base of our many outreach programs that proactively connect with people living outdoors, our street outreach teams, winter emergency bus, and crisis diversion team. More than anything, this project represents a chance to put reconciliation into action. More than 75% of the people we serve are of Indigenous descent. This is the result of hundreds of years of racism and colonialism, 
and shameful atrocities that many of us have not had to endure as settlers to this land. For those of us who are non-Indigenous, we can no longer sit on the sidelines. Reconciliation is a verb. It requires action. We need to get off the sidelines and enter the arena. We need action. As Boyle Street Community Services, we commit to this building project being done in a way that honours Indigenous ways of knowing, guided by our elders and knowledge keepers, with ceremony as our foundation. We invite Edmontonians to join us in our mission to end chronic homelessness. That this kind of suffering through homelessness exists in our community speaks to the deep wounds that need healing, and together we can support the healing that is so desperately needed. This project is an intersection, a crossing of paths between those who have suffered at the hands of colonialism in the worst ways and those who have the privilege and ability to do something about it. We need Edmontonians from all walks of life to join us in this effort, to join us in upsetting the status quo and doing better for those who deserve so much more than the suffering that they are subjected to. Today, as we celebrate the launch of this transformative project for those we serve at Boyle Street, we are asking Edmontonians to build with Boyle to build better mental health supports with us, to build cultural and ceremonial access with us, to build community and relationships with us, and to build dignity with us. Thank you. So as we uh, close this, uh, as we mentioned before, this has been a journey of, of over six years of trying to find the right fit. And a lot of incredibly hard work has gone into that. And I want to just thank a few people really quickly. Um, to the many, many people, the team members of Boyle Street, who have dreamed of this project for so many years, who've put energy into this project for so many years, um, who have continued in their day-to-day -day work to demand better for the people that we serve, we want to thank you for everything that you do for our community, especially over the last um, 18 months, you are the heroes um, of our city, and so we appreciate you and we thank you. To the team that has been working directly on this project, I want to thank uh, Diana Elniski, Elliot Tanti, Laurel McCalla, Ian Matheson for all of the work that you put into making this day a reality and made this happen. Thank you. To our board of directors who have uh, been committed to this project and are committed to our community members and serving them the best way possible. Thank you for your persistence and for your guidance on this journey. Uh, we are here in, in large part because of that uh, guidance and that effort and that persistence that you put into this project. And specifically, Bob, Philp, thank you for all the time that you put into this project. There are so many people who have volunteered and supported us on, on this journey, and there are too many to name. Uh, but they've been critical to our ability to stand here today and to all of you, we just want to say from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for all that you've done. Finally, we want to thank our partners in all of this who answered the call when we asked them, as Krista said, to build with us. When we toured this site last year, uh, it actually was a lot colder than it is today. It was about minus 40, surprisingly. Um, uh, we knew that this could be our future home. Uh, we worked with a group of consultants to complete significant due diligence on the site, and once we were confident that it was the right place for us, we approached our friends and partners at the Oilers Entertainment Group and the Edmonton Oilers Community Foundation. We expressed to them what we needed to move this project forward, and they, in turn, came to the table in the spirit of collaboration and partnership. In very short order, we had a deal in place. We met with the board of directors of the Oilers Community Foundation who had shifted their mandate to supporting issues related to their immediate neighbourhood and ending homelessness. After much discussion, they came to the table with the transformative contribution that they're announcing here today. To everyone at the Oilers and, uh, and Edmonton Oilers Community Foundation, thank you for your ongoing partnership, for your friendship, and for what your generosity has made possible for our organization and our team but most importantly for those that we serve. Thank you. 
Now we're going to invite. Uh, I'm going to invite our board chair Greg to come up. Um, we have a. We're going to unveil the rendering of our new of our new building, and then we have a small gift for for our friends at the foundation. So do you want to come up, Natalie? present, we have uh, some gifts for the Oilers Community Foundation, which Greg is going to present. We have a medallion, which was made, and a star blanket, both made from uh, by community members. And so uh, we just want to honor you, uh, Natalie, and the foundation with these gifts. Thank you so much for all you've done for our organization and our Beautiful. people. Sure, yeah. And Natalie's going to come up and speak for the foundation now. Well, I, it's just uh, overwhelming. I'm so delighted, humbled, and honored to be here today speaking on behalf of the Edmonton Northers Community Foundation. The Edmonton Oilers Community Foundation is a proud supporter of oil country and has been contributing to our community's success since 2001. With a focus on programs aimed at those most vulnerable in our community, especially in Edmonton's downtown, and youth hockey programming with a goal to increase participation of underrepresented groups in our community, our Oilers Foundation is deeply committed to its goal of helping to enrich lives and eradicate social issues while finding long-term solutions to build strong, vibrant, and safe communities. From the earliest days in our new home at Rogers Place, Boyle Street Community Services has been a valued partner, friend, and neighbor of ours. Boyle Street has said for many years that a new facility is needed to properly and safely serve their clients, and the pandemic has just accelerated this very critical need. We have been in discussing opportunities with partnerships for Boyle Street for the past few years, and we are thrilled that Boyle Street has found this new location just a few blocks from their current location to where we're standing today. This new location, as Jordan has indicated, will be bi built to purpose for their clients, 75% of which are Indigenous. So I'm delighted and pleased to announce today that the Edmonton Oilers Community Foundation is making a $10 million donation to support this project. It's absolutely tremendous. This is the largest single donation in the 20 year history of the Edmonton Oilers Community Foundation. It not only speaks to the importance, but also the need to further symbolize our commitment to positively affect the lives of some of those most vulnerable in our community. This donation was made possible through the generosity of Euler fans throughout the province who have supported our Euler's 50-50 program. Our board of directors took a significant time to identify this transformational project to invest our 50-50 dollars to, and Boyle Street Community Services is the perfect example. So to date, uh, our Oilers Community Foundation has reinvested over $66 million to countless programs, organizations, and charities throughout oil country. We look forward to a long-lasting and successful partnership relationship with our friends at Boyle Street Community Services and the populations that they serve. Thank you.
you so much, Natalie, and the Edmonton Oilers Community Foundation for making this project and partnership a reality. It's now my pleasure to invite Treaty 6 Grand Chief Greg Desjardins to the podium for our final words. Aonista, asemina na naskamao kutawino, kala naskamao to wins kawanot, asemina tamskat no kakio. I too, I said, I thank our Creator for today, for allowing us to get up. I shake hands with each and every one of you. You know, my name is. Chief Greg Desjardins. I'm a former alcoholic and an addict. I just want to, to say, you know, I come here to support such a beautiful project. You know, the, the Boyle Street staff, the community that I have met just recently, you know, the word that come to my mind is angelic because this is what the creator wants from each and every one of us my friends my friends my family my relatives the creator wants each and every one to look at each other as human beings you know here we 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 sit and we stand in this building it's only temporary and yet i'm cold you know so I think about the people that have to fend for themselves on the outside in these tents and these tarps. You know, I want to thank, uh, again, the Oilers Foundation for stepping up. You know, because we have to find a solution. You know, be part of the solution and not ostracizing these individuals. I just want to share with the group, my challenge is that the chief of Frog Lake, we get 235,000 for housing. So you can see where it starts already. You change some windows, you change some doorknobs, you hire a director already, you depleted your funds. So where do our people go? They become transient, they head to the city. You know, we're supposed to live in the, ma the, the land of uh, milk and honey here in Alberta. You know, but our people, you know, we don't benefit from the oil and gas resources unless you are doing it yourself on your nation. The transfer payments that go across Canada that improve the lives of all the Canadians don't come to our nations. I jokingly say, but it's a reality. You can tell when you hit the reserve because you hit a washboard. The grader turns around on the county road and heads back. You know, I just wanted to share some words because we have to create hope in one another. You know, when I ran for chief, I ran on hope because I come I have to speak for the kids that are yet to come and the unborn. What am I going to leave for them? You know, it's too e easy to criticize. And I want to thank our chief who spoke for us for many years at that high level at the UN. For only us First Nations to be recognized as a people, as a human being for that matter. I thank you. You know, and that's all we want as First Nations people is to be recognized as human beings. We may, we may be different shades on the outside, but we're all the same on the inside. You know, working together with all the people that are in this room is just like our fingers on our hand. If one of them is broken or don't work, your hand doesn't serve you well. So that's what I see here in a partnership. You know, to Jordan and Krista, I, I thank you again. Because the Creator, He brings us 
people in our paths and our lives. He connects us. He sees us here today. We could just go the other way and pretend this is, ain't going to happen. But we are part of the solution here today. Be proud of what you're doing. People will criticize, but we need to look deep in, inside the hearts of these individuals and their spirit. Some of them have lost those traditional values of spirituality. So they become challenged. They're not balanced. They're not balanced because you need the four elements, your mind, your body, physical, spirituality, to function. So with this facility, we'll give them that. You will give them that. You know, I want to call all in, on industry to help this project through, the governments. You know, you can't just say you're going to fix homelessness and not do nothing about it. You know, even the city of Edmonton, they have to have a plan. And I thank Boyle Street for having a plan. Because the old way our people taught us, our ancestors, our, our parents, what you say and what comes out of your mouth is, your, is just like, you know, your word is golden. You know, so I want to thank our elder Clifford and our grandmother for those prayers because when I was lost with addiction, I went to my uncle Clifford's Sundance and I never stopped yet. I dance every year without water and food because we need to see what these kids at home are feeling when they're hungry with their sore tummies or what these people that sleep on the ground You know, and uh, I'm excited because there's a solution that's happening today. You know, when I first got into leadership, I told Dr. David Swan at the legislature building here that what was needed was a beautiful facility like on the one on Anthony Hende there, the Remand Center. And this is a smaller version of that You know, so I, I wanted to just share a few things to let us all think together, collaborate with our collective minds, but also going to the prayer to the higher power like what was done today. We are a prayer people. You can never pray too much. There's probably somebody praying again right now in here. You know, so on behalf of the, the Treaty 6 Confederacy, Frog Lake, treaty, the treaty people of this, this city, you know, we want to say thank you because like what you heard, 75% of our people, 165 people they lost. One month ago, one was brought back to my nation in a box, a 24 your old man. You know, so it's up to us to help these people find themselves, to help them build a future. Even better yet, help them get a, a 12 by 10 room with fresh paint instead of sleeping in the river like I heard. You know, so be proud of what you're doing here today. Our God is watching us, our creator. We have different names for him. And he's going to guide you in this project. And I can't wait to come and join you in ceremony. You know, because our people that are walking out, they're lost. They're the creator's children as well, our brothers and our sisters. So with that, I shake hands with each and every one of you. And may the Creator bless your home and your home fires, your family. 
You know, and with Christmas coming, you know, take time out to pray for these people that are struggling on the streets and homeless with a mental addiction, thinking suicide. That's an addiction too. My late father said we never had that. I don't know what that is. But all he could tell me is their fire has gone out. Their internal flame. That was his, his definition of that. You know, so with that, again, at I'm Scott now, that means I shake hands with you. May Creator bless each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Grand Chief Desjardins. Please welcome Chubby Cree to the stage for a final performance. Yeah, um, it's freezing in here. <laughs> but I wanted to share a little something about me and Noah. Uh, we came out into the public like 10 years ago. He started singing at the grand age of one. He's 11 now. I taught him everything he knows, taught him the culture, the ways, of our people, what I was taught by my grandparents in the community of our grand people, grand our elders, like uh, had the great opportunity to meet my great great grandfather. He was 99, I was five. But they taught us everything. They taught us how to love, how to care for one another. Wanted us to teach our children. My great grandfather said, "Utini gan." Gangamon, Osam, he said, in the future, you're going to sing. He said, the reason why is because I want you to inspire the women and children to come back to the drum. He said, that's the only time we're going to heal. He said, I'm not demoting myself because I'm a man. He said, I'm telling you the truth. That's the only time we're going to heal. So we're going to teach you every step of the way. And they taught, they taught me. So I taught all my kids, my grandkids, and other women, other children. We've inspired a lot of people throughout the world. But our first performance in the public was at Boyle Street Co-op for the homeless. And I remember that day so well with all the people, our homeless people there were the greatest support ever. And we felt so at home. A lot of people were like, oh, don't go there. Those guys are crazy. You know, no. The best people you know, the best people you can feel safe with are the homeless. Our people, so lost. So we help them through drumming and singing to help them heal. And we keep doing that. We just keep remembering that. We're known throughout the world now, but we always remember the healing first, the heart first, our people, others, everybody. We all matter. Every race matters. But I wish you can recognize us natives, you know. We're good people. We have good hearts. We love each other. We're there for each other. We raise our children till they're 75, you know. <laughs> we never throw them out the door. Like, there's no way. Because that's our future. And I'll keep doing that. And I have to share a little story. 
may be standing here for strength. Because two days ago, the police came and told me my daughter passed away. But I went and seen her yesterday. I visited with her. She hung out at the Boyle Street, too. But I got to be strong. That's why we came out today to do this. I don't know how, how we're going to raise enough to, to lay her to rest, but we're going to do it. I ask the Creator. I ask for that support and strength. But we come here today to heal Nistanan by the Moxia Gakyo. But we're going to do this somehow, some way. So we'll do an honor song for you, and then Noah's going to rock your world.
He's so shy, like he could sing in front of thousands of people, but he can't say a word. <laughs> hey, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Noah and Carol, for, for being here today with us on a, a day of grief for you. We're very grateful you could come and celebrate with us. So thank you. Um, we're very grateful that uh, Chief Little Child is here today and just want to offer him an opportunity to say a few words as well. Well, good morning. Uteni kan vastaaks nämä magustik. Apuut kaikki ihtako unikaan ju uteni kan tätäkin teijut tapskutski oma, kiitu te meikanot, eikä kisumu eikä kuskin näes kumt nao. Thank you very, very, very much for this opportunity. I wanted to first add my voice of thanks to all of those that were up here and uh, had a function for which we're all very grateful for. I want to tell a couple of quick stories. I wore my orange shirt on purpose today because this is for children. This is all about the children, this project. And we've heard that said when we have one day to commemorate children who have lost their lives in 
residential schools and so on. But it should be every day. Every day should be Orange Day. After all, every day is an Oilers Colors Day. <laughs> I'm very proud of the Edmonton Oilers team, the entertainment group, and also the Community Foundation. And thank you, Natalie, for always representing us in the greatest and uh, unbelievable way of keeping our team together so that we can make decisions like we did for this. The story I was going to tell you is because uh, although it's cold, my dad was found in a tent when he was 12 years old, along with my auntie, his sister. So that gave me opportunity to think and wonder how cold they were on a day like this, out in a tent. And then, secondly, my first job here in the city of Edmonton was right here in Ball Street. I worked with the homeless, the children, who I was always told, told to be very careful of because they're so bad, and yet, they weren't. They were the greatest group one could find to work with. And I've had the great opportunity to find, for me, what saved my life that was hockey. So it's been a tremendous honor for me to be on the board for the Oilers. And I know there's other, it's really dark, I can't see over here, but I know there's some other board members here, aren't there, Kat? Yes, so, and I think Tim was here earlier. Um, so the, the, my colleagues on the board, thank you for joining this. Uh, uh, what will unfold, I'll make a prediction, I'll, it will unfold to be something just unbelievable. Yes, we talked about the unmarked graves and the missing children of whom I just was working on looking, pushing a machine to a ground penetrating radar machine looking for little bodies in the missing graves. That was a lost opportunity, but here will grow a different opportunity where there might be a prime minister come from here. Maybe it'll be an oiler. Maybe it'll be a chief. Maybe another spiritual leader like we had. And thank you. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. In the four directions in our culture, we say, Nenanaskumun, Nenanaskumun. In the Naskomun, in the Naskomun, he go from Stauci, he saw him go Siakanos, Migaton. Hi, hi. Thank you for all, all of you for being here, braving the cold. And uh, um, as I say, what will unfold from this place is it will be incredible contribution, not only to the city of Edmonton, but to the country and to the world. Hi, hi. Thank you very much. Well, thank you all. That concludes the formal program for today. And thank you for being here with us and shivering with us and celebrating with us. So those most involved um, from our friends in the media who are here, those most involved with the project will be available for interviews uh, just over here, I believe. And the rest of you, please grab a coffee or a hot chocolate. might not be so hot anymore. And there is a nice partnership gift uh, as well, I think, just at the back table. So thank you. Mm -hmm.